They expect nearly 30,000 here tonight at the home of the largest on-campus crowds in the history of NCAA basketball. And if you couldn't be here tonight to watch the game on ESPN, you could certainly read about SU basketball. Both Syracuse daily newspapers came out with full-section supplements about the Orange, numbering 20 pages. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the second of 211 live college basketball games this season here on ESPN. I'm Sean McDonough, along with the governor, Bill Raftery. I left Syracuse not all that long ago, but our ESPN research staff still trying to figure out when the big guy left LaSalle. Well, I played so poorly, I had to sneak out in the middle of the evening, but they gave me the transcript when I left. Didn't do much in the championship game, however, against Pittsburgh Central Catholic. He only tallied 53 points. His team, while he was in high school, 118 and 11. And Jim Beheim hopes he has similar success with Billy Owens over the next four years. Not only did Billy Owens receive a great deal of attention while in high school, as those members demonstrate, but he's received a lot of attention since he arrived here on the SU campus. Billy Owens featured on Sports Illustrated College Basketball Preview. He's getting almost all of the attention. They're starting to forget about guys like Sherman Douglas and Derek Coleman. That might be good for a guy like Coleman. Well, it might be the impetus that Derek Coleman needs. He needs a push. The coaches feel he played hard all summer, worked on his game, and during preseason, it's a different, a directed Derek Coleman. Syracuse led by the general preseason All-American Sherman Douglas. Well, he's such a great penetrator, one of the important. When Dave Bing was a freshman, we played the ball. We played, of course, the second game. When we came out, the 8,000 people left. They didn't want to watch us. They wanted to watch Dave Bing. Can't blame them. A Syracuse tradition. They stand and applaud until the Orangemen score their first basket. Lionel Simmons will jump for LaSalle and Derek Coleman for Syracuse. Larry Rose, the official, puts it in the air, and we are underway. Freshman Jack Hurd controlled the tip. And now it's Doug Overton, sophomore point guard for LaSalle. Guarded by Sherman Douglas. Overton missed. And off the rebound action, Matt Rowe, number three for the Orange. So the junior guard to Stephen Thompson, now to Rowe. Two, three, LaSalle. Alley oop intended for Coleman, and he was fouled underneath the basket. Craig Thompson, number 42. Bump Coleman. Well, you'll see a lot of those at this club. Thompson and, of course, Derek Coleman, usually the recipients of a Sherman Douglas pass. Not bad numbers for Bayheim. 12 seasons as head coach and 12 postseason appearances. Got to be monotonous for Jimmy. Well, tried to throw it underneath, and Simmons knocked it out of bounds. Now, Sean, Speedy Morris, the LaSalle coach, wants to give the outside shot. He's going to concede it, so Matt Rowe needs a big ball game. We played 30 seconds in the first half. No score. Douglas and Rowe, the starting backward for Syracuse, with Thompson, Coleman, and Owens up front. This forces the clock to be used as well, this 2-3 zone. 20 seconds left on the shot clock. D.B. Thompson banks it in. Part of his game, that ability to slither between defenders. The full court pressure. Jack Hurd, the freshman from Lidditz, Pennsylvania. Short with the shot. Owens with the rebound. Rowe underneath to Thompson. Four points for Stevie Thompson, four for Syracuse, and a 4 nothing Orange lead. The South can't afford to give those transition baskets, Sean. They've got to take good shots and balance the floor. Overton, number 11, really the only good ball handler that LaSalle has as a point guard. Great Conlon the shot. And it's Douglas. To Owen, to Coleman, and he lost it out of game against the of Yugoslavia. Derek Coleman had a lot of trouble handling passes underneath, particularly from Billy Owens. That was an excellent bounce pass. Very catchable. See a little flare. A little extra by Sherman, but right here something that I believe Owens does best. They got the five-second violation. You've got to break the plane with the ball now. They don't count as it's in the air anymore. Speedy Morris did not like the call. Thought it was quick. Because he realizes he can't let it go early. He's got to get on the board, hang tough, maintain some composure, which is where he misses those two great yards. Sherman Douglas, senior from Washington, D.C. Owens again, a good pass to Thompson. He missed. Coleman, the rebound. 
Lionel Simmons committed the foul on Coleman. Uh, if they do miss, you have to make sure you check a guy out. Owens in the middle of the zone. You can't let the ball get into the teeth, into the three-second lane. Now there's choices. The defense doesn't know how to react. You see Coleman, who I think is going to lead the country in rebounding. Well missed from three-point range and a breakaway layup for Overton. And the foul is on the board. It's 4-2 Syracuse, two minutes played, first half. Now, Speedy was a great coach, Roman Catholic in high school. Mike Bannon was one of his great players. Dallas Coleman was a sophomore at Roman when he left to go into. Oh, he moved to another high school job, eventually the woman's coach at LaSalle. Great reputation in Philly for his ability on the bench. Owens are wide open. And he hit. Barnes have to slide down and take away that pass. Sal pushes it up. Overton banks it in. He has all four explorer points and serves usually six to four. It's an important pass for LaSalle, but the tempo, they've got to make sure they slow it. Can't get Syracuse going. Row for three. In and out. Owens appeared to be over the back of Conlon underneath. I think Reek got underneath and pushed. No, it's gone against Owens. Little break. Well, two years from now, Billy will get those calls. <laughs> The 1-2-1-1, one, one, one. Sherman's in the middle. Did get back? Simmons down low, Bird, in. Simmons had it blocked, but he was fouled. Both Coleman and Owens were there underneath, and it looked like Derek Coleman. Dirk reached down. But LaSalle, a confident team, 14-0 in their own conference last year, the MAC. They'll take the opportunity break. Lionel, real strong, not afraid to challenge people inside. Gola, make people forget them. You didn't. No, certainly did not. <laughs> There's a statue there of St. John Baptist with a little kid. People said it was Gola. Look at this. Pass off the glass. And Coleman comes it in. Good handle the original alley-oop. Bayheim says Sherman Douglas does the alley-oop pass better than anybody in college basketball. Uh, he may. A lot of people have on the Roll American team. As he goes, they'll go, I think. <laughs> Overton. Confident. Got the bounce, in and out and in again. Overton is all seven LaSalle points, and Syracuse leads eight to seven. He played three and a half minutes here at the carrier dome. Douglas, the yes. flyer. A lot of people didn't like that when he was a freshman. They've gotten used to it because he converts. Overton with confidence, too long, and that rebound to Thompson. Douglas Allen. has row and Thompson. Nice defensive play by Simmons. They didn't have the numbers, LaSalle. They got to get back. Heard the Didn't get the bounce, but he got the foul from Billy Owens. And Heard and Owens are familiar with each other. They played against each other last season in Pennsylvania high school basketball. Now, Heard doesn't have great foot speed, but he appears to have good knowledge of the game. Real flying crossover move, the dip in traffic, attracting Billy Owens. Nice little play. And of course, his number is 25, which I wore at LaSalle. I didn't retire it. Finally, Stevie Thompson. And Manny said he to Bernie Klein, who did the recruiting and did such a great job with the big guys here at Syracuse. His parents and Richie used to watch the ball game and said, gee, maybe someday Syracuse will recruit us. Stevie Thompson, another California, steps on the end line. No basket, the ball goes over to the Explorers. And we head for a timeout. 15.49 to play in the first half. It's Syracuse 10 and LaSalle 8. And Horn sounded, but play continues, and Overton brings the ball up. This is like a four-corner delay right here. Three-two set. We'll try to use some clock or take the dribble to the goal. Simmons is very good in this set. Five seconds. And they get the call. Five seconds. The freshman, Don Shelton, just into the game. Couldn't get rid of the ball. And I got Beheim into the game with four and a half minutes. Quick help or assistance to the official. First of the year. Beattie's been into it since they threw it up. Guards have to take away that middle there. You see Manning flashing. If he can get it, he can turn and see over people. And they got Coleman high. Douglas for three, yes. Overton, a sophomore from Philadelphia out of Dobbins Tech High School. 
Down low to the co-captain Conlon, and he had it rejected by Coleman. But a mistake. Lazy defense by Derek. Let the man post up, relied on his height and anticipation. And somebody his size and foot speed could be in trouble. Coaches tell us that Coleman has been very dedicated to working in the preseason. Thompson hits for three. And Syracuse has opened up a 16-8 lead. 14-40 to play first half. Well, that's exactly what Speedy was going to live and die with. Syracuse's ability to hit from deep. So far, they been doing a good job. And the man for the orange. Stop. Bird took a bad shot. Bird got it back and lost it to Douglas. Three on two, Syracuse. Roll all along. gave it up early enough. The pass that led to the pass that led to the goal. Dome Ranger and the fans are in the game and Speedy Morris for yesterday. Hey, he's gaining on me. <laughs> Lionel Simmons didn't get the roll. Throw the rebound. Ten points Syracuse lead. 14 minutes to play first half. Much better shot though. Rich Manning, the freshman. A player, by the way. Row, yes, 20 to 8. Uh, Maddie just needs a little confidence. Terrific stroke. He gets going. He's a great asset to this program. And he wants your job as a communication <laughs> student. Relax, play a little bit in Europe, maybe some NBA. Simmons <laughs> forced it up. Syracuse Bench was looking for a call, and Conlon converts. Well, if you take good shots, your big guys can get in position to be active. You can't throw those quick ones up. Ten points, Syracuse lead. 13 10 to play first half. Still a 2 3. Now, this outside shooting should drag them out and be able to get that kind of pass. Coleman and Thompson tipped it up and missed, and he went over the back of Craig Conlon, it appears. Stevie doesn't need any help. He gets up as quick as most kids. Very active. He's 6'4", but the Syracuse coaches say he plays like a man 6'10". He has that kind of leaping ability. Thompson committed the foul. The fourth foul against the Orange here in the first half. They, they had these stories in the paper, your favorite things, favorite place in town, or away at home, he said home, favorite place in Syracuse, home, he said. <laughs> he can't wait to get back to Crenshaw. L.A. 2-3 now by Syracuse. Got the goal, and the foul went against Manning. Good, strong move by Conlon. Manning didn't get over and get set. A little more, little more composure. Against the 2-3, you see Simmons does so much for LaSalle. If he had stayed on the ground, Conlon would have gone right over him. Said he challenged the shot, got the foul. And he got the lead to seven. High percentage shooter, too. Only takes good shots. Rowe and Douglas in the Syracuse backcourt. Herman Harid into the ball game. He's up front now with Manning and Thompson. They flash and turn and look low in that three-second area. Herman, a great jumper, very active. Bob Johnson has come into the ball game. Much better D right now. More active by LaSalle. Pretty good. Back come the Explorers, Overton. Good balance. Now the drop it to five. Twelve minutes to play, first half. Two three with this lineup. I'm sure Jimmy got confident with Manning and Harid and a man wise. Bob Johnson's first shot is good. Three pointer. Bob Johnson jumped off the bench. The junior from Philadelphia left the Syracuse to lead the four. We're at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York. First round action of the Big Apple NIT in Syracuse has a four-point lead. Lead was once 12. Can't leave him on the ball fake. <laughs> He'll burn you. Three more for the general and a 23 to 16 lead. Overton. He's on fire right now. He wants the ball. They haven't been able to get Lionel Simmons into the offense, but Doug Overton has taken over. Sherman, the choreographer. I thought he put a few pounds on few extra candy bars this summer. Johnson saved it. Overton one-on-one -on -one with Rowe. Simmons the slam dunk. He can finish it off. Sloppy ball handling on the perimeter. A few times they've had to run the ball down, sir. It's not smooth. Sal, an NCAA 
tournament team last year as the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference champion. Good went, composure to get back in this. They went 14 and 0 in their league last year. Drove for three, missed. Johnson couldn't haul it in, and Speedy Morris <laughs> along the sideline. Oh, he wanted that rebound. Certainly did. Row again for three. Didn't get it. Simmons the rebound. Heady play. You see him? He looked to dish it out, controlled it. Explorers with a chance with a three-point goal to tie it up. Midway through the first half. Little slice got for Simmons. Pretty flank. And he got the roll. It's a one-point Syracuse lead. Speedy Morris's club is on a run. Good execution. Real heads-up play and good self-control. A 14-3 LaSalle run has brought the Explorers back within one. Row for three again. No. He's gone cold from long range. And Johnson has given the Explorers a lift off the bench. Doug Overton, first team, all-Mac rookie team last year. Oh, man, shot. Looking for the foul. Matt Rowe. Now Douglas. It's still Harid, Manning, and Thompson in the front court, both Owens and Coleman on the bench. Douglas for three. Yes. From three feet beyond the three point line. Solid. He just does so many things. This club, Syracuse, I believe at the end of the year, Billy Owens will be the backup point guy. That's the one area that they have some problems if Sherman has to take a blow or if he gets in foul trouble. They say of all Billy Owens' skills, his passing is mm -hmm. the strongest attribute. And I compared him to Leo Rounds as one of the greats. A lot of people up here agree as a big passer, he got steps, puts you the pivot foot. As a classmate of Leo Routens, I would agree. He was an outstanding passer. Sherman Douglas playing the trials, he said terrible compared to his ability. And a lot of people may have given John Thompson the heat on some of the picks, but a lot of the guys didn't play well. Rex Chapman didn't play well from what people have told me. I mean, it's, it's easy to sit back and not see them perform. Coleman and Owens back in, and Coleman lost the ball out of bounds. Syracuse 26 and LaSalle 22 in this first round Big Apple NIT game. Of course, Heard was out for composure. Just relax and sort of speedy today. When you go back in, bad pick, the move by Heard. Just off the bench. Eight minutes to play, first half. The read to Johnson just in the game. And now Thompson. from the short range by Coleman, then threw the outlet pass away, and Speedy threw the jacket away. His first. Great to see. That's the part of the game I enjoy. A lot of the rules restrict the coaches, but here's the sloppy play by LaSalle. Over the top by Hurd. Not into it in that sequence. You got it. 29-22. Syracuse with a seven-point lead. Seven and a half minutes to play until we join Tim Brando for scores and highlights at halftime. Timmy B's got to show a little more enthusiasm. <laughs> Good downstream. Bob Johnson. Now, over the years, Syracuse has played good man to man, but they haven't had the bench, the depth, to play it all the time. That's why Jimmy goes for that two, three, steals some time. Dave the freshman, wearing number 23. <laughs> Louisiana. Oh. Douglas couldn't handle the pass from Johnson. Floppy on the perimeter again. Overton. Yes. Doug Overton leading the way for LaSalle, and they're back within five, 640 to play, first half. All two freight, little change now. Coming out and trapping in the corner out of it. Almost a one two two look right now. Coleman. Well, he, was, he was stroking that yesterday, wasn't he? He said he might even extend his range out to three-point land this year. That was his quote in the paper. I don't think Jim Beheim would allow That's that to just, go on too long. Just to give him a little twist. Douglas. 
blocked away by Overton. Got a break there. He didn't do a good job taking away the sideline. He almost turned it into a three-point play. Matty Rowe is back in for Dave Johnson. He looked a bit nervous in his first stint as a Syracuse Orangeman. Seven-point Syracuse lead. Alley-oop. Owens oh. took it down. Off the glass and laid it in at one count. Do you know how hard it is to mistime your jump and still go up sure-handed? Only a freshman. <laughs> and we saw his first game, right? Mm -hmm. There's going to be something else. Sherman spots them and usually delivers. And tomorrow at 6 o'clock Eastern time, he's a member of the Syracuse University football team. They'll be playing West Virginia. Matt Rowe for two, didn't get it. You saw, though, the ball to the foul line, and Owen's able to turn and spot people. They can't let that pass get in there. It's going to certainly hurt LaSalle in the second half. Whistle underneath, and a holding call on Rowe, I think. Mm -hmm. Sal trails by seven there. Remaining within striking distance with Fox. Almost a violation again. An awful leg, and it goes over to Syracuse. Conlon bounced it off the leg of Simmons, and it went out of bounds. Well, more and more people are doing a good job to denying the basketball on inbounds passes. Douglas for three. Owen. Wait it in. Hurts it in and out. And the offensive foul by Overton. But you better be careful. Flip the ball at the official. Take the ball out of bounds. So a chance for a four or even a five-point play for Syracuse. They lead by nine. 5.20 to play first half. They're off the glass again. They have not timed the alley-oop right once yet. Douglas Double. has tried it three or four times. Double dribble. Yeah, they've thrown it off the glass on purpose, which is very tough to time. You're anticipating the loop. A little frustration vented by Speedy. This team still doesn't look relaxed, and we played nearly 15 minutes here in the first half. Well, kids read things, and they know they're not the favorite coming in here. Enemy territory, tough building. Douglas missed the runner. Thompson had his hands on the rebound and lost it. Can't get up. Almost. He'll go Levers out of the Ooh. Netherlands. That was the man who laid the outlet pass to Simmons, and he lays it in. The basket cool. Shouldn't be a bad no. Oh, NBA can do it, and LaSalle's back within six. What happens with Syracuse when they play against the zone, they're in a hurry to score. They just take their time and get whatever they want. All of a sudden, they'll gamble on all you, a tough, tougher pass than they should throw. Joe for three. No, he is really cooled off. Look at Sherman. He stole it from Simmons. Nice look. And the bucket for Stevie Thompson. Matt Rowe with the feed. Thompson with the hoop, and it's 35-27, Syracuse. For those who play the game, that's more satisfying than nailing the jumper. Taking a pass like that. 4.20 to play in the half. Simmons made it. Clear out. They do a lot of cute things for Lionel. Leave you on your own out there in man-to-man. -man. Little half-court trap. And the general takes over and spreads the floor. 1-2-2 two, two is giving him a little more trouble. And they would up on the shooters and take away the post a little bit. Twenty seconds on the shot clock. The starting lineup back in there for Syracuse. Coleman. One of those long legs. Do we need two steps to send it in? That good recovery defensively by LaSalle in the back. An eight-point lead for Syracuse. The largest lead of the game, 12 points. And Overton banks it in. Well, he looks confident, doesn't he? Not afraid to take it to the goal. Good recovery. Owens tried to lay it off to Thompson, and it was Bob Johnson who made the play defensively. Might not stay all four years, but he said in the paper today he plans to finish out his eligibility in Syracuse. If he goes after it all the time, there aren't too many players better than him. Matt Rowe. Only six foot four in the traffic, but Steve Thompson laid it in, and Syracuse lead is back to eight, 39-31, with 2.50 to play in the first half. And Stevie Thompson's got Simmons. It's, it's amazing what they do with him. He's just to fix it for this club. For three, Bob Johnson, no good. 
harsh. And Syracuse gets it out of bounds. He says Billy Owens should be the best ever here. High compliment with his personnel over the years. Douglas, the flyer. That's the penetration. Speedy hopes to take it away. If you get him into the teeth of the zone, you're in tough shape. Ten-point Syracuse lead, their largest lead, 12. Craig Conlon for LaSalle. Simmons tries it from just inside the three-point line. Rowe had it. They got jump, no. jump ball, one's got a walk. Change of possession, Syracuse ball. They rule that Rowe traveled after the held ball. Herman Harid back into the ball game for Syracuse, and Matt Rowe goes out, as does Billy Owen. And Dave Johnson is back in, and Speedy Morris. Not, Not a happy camp. No. no, he thought they should have had the ball. Dave Johnson. I think Speedy's club just somewhat impatient and rattled. Other than that, you know, doing some good things defensively. Douglas was stripped of the ball. Simmons starts for the foul break. Ten point Syracuse lead. <laughs> Terrible foul. Douglas the other way, and Simmons left him lower. He's so clever. Took Simmons out of the play by dribbling in his pass. 12 point balls matches Syracuse's largest lead of the half. 115 to play till halftime. Steve Reese, the freshman number 51, missed it. Big Simmons went high for it. Traffic rebound, another one. And he saves it. Conlon, who couldn't handle it. Overton, way off. And three on one. Bad shots lead to fast break. Douglas. Oh, good. Coleman went high. And he was fouled while on the floor. Not a shooting foul. Where he go up big with those arms extended. Reach there late, but bad shots on one end. That's what Speedy's thinking. The rush on one end, they'll punish you the other. Let's try and hang around 10 for this last minute and go in and gain control of ourselves. Steve Reach, the Bob Johnson. Back for Reach. And he hits. Steve Reach, the freshman from Maplewood, New Jersey. Puts the Syracuse lead back at 10, 43-33. Syracuse can't hold to the last shot if it wants to, and it looks like that's what Bayheim is going to do. And Speedy counter a little half-court trap. 1-2-1-1, one, one, one. back into the zone. And you got to be careful with the alley oop now, with Sherman out there. And obviously, his great ability to penetrate, too. He's going to get right into the teeth and dump it off for an easy one. Right down there. Down to four seconds. Good defense by LaSalle, and Syracuse does not get a shot on Beautiful job. Good containment. An emotional first half for Speedy Morris. Jim Beheim much more placid along the Syracuse bench. And the Orangemen go off. He's getting beat by it so far this evening. Xavier has defeated Louisville 85-83 in first round. Big Apple NIT action tonight in Cincinnati. The exciting conclusion of which you just witnessed on ESPN. Stevie Thompson showing good foot speed to deny the ball, then deflect it. Amazing how he can play the bigger guys effectively. What a night here on ESPN. A little bonus coverage, and we get a great finish like that ball game at Cincinnati. It's fun to be back at it, I'll tell you. A long summer off. So I guess we've had now two and a half games out of the 211 coming up this season on the end. Nice look. Lawrence is committing a pull away. Sherman Douglas. How about the soft pass to a little curl in it so you can run under it by Billy O. An 18-point lead. 16-10 to play. If Syracuse wins this ball game, they'll be home for second round action on Sunday here at the Carrier Dome. The opponent yet to be determined. They'll reseed the field after tonight's result and set the matchup. Ball on Thompson. He was riding Simmons across the lane. A little nickel dimer, but if you notice, Derek Coleman's playing a one-man zone, trying to help Stevie Thompson whenever Simmons is around. 
First foul of the half of Jim Beheim's team. Second personal foul in the ball game on Stevie Thompson. Final Simmons has nine points in the first half. He lost the ball. up with the zone. I'd say around the 10-minute mark, if they don't crack this lead, if they keep making these threes, it's going to be tough. You might see them switch to the man-to-man. -man. Overton brings it up. He was the leading LaSalle scorer in the first half with 12 points. Shot goes, and Douglas fouled him. A little lazy defensively right now. For the Lady Explorers for two seasons, Pride is switching over and being the head man for the men's program. And as far as anybody knows, it's the first time that's ever happened. Mm -hmm. Coach has made the transition from women's basketball to men's. He's on every play. Coach, and a full court pressure now. Speedy trying to get back in this thing and then back to a half court track. He certainly paid his due 16 years in high school coach in Philadelphia, and he won 80% of his games between Roman Catholic and William Penn Charter School. Very nice person, too. Yes, he is. Easy going, very humble. Much like you. Thank you. Maddie has been lighting up in the second half. I don't know what they said to him. He'll be driving up the ratings for his radio show. Matt Rowe hosts his own radio show on the student radio station WJPZ here on the Syracuse campus. Well, they're known for communications here, aren't they? A little bit. A lot of people doubling and tripling Lionel Simmons. They need some other answers. And Craig Conlon provides one answer. 58-44. Jim Beheim and the Orange of Syracuse lead by 14 with 14.20 to play. I detect some of the Syracuse kids are tired. It looks that way. Yeah. And really, a lot of the starters saw some considerable time on the bench in the first half. The young guys, I can see nerves. That gets you tired quickly. But some of the older guys, standing upright, not really ready to play. Jack Hurd back into the ball game for LaSalle, and Bob Johnson goes out. Billy Owens having trouble getting it in. Nice Over play. He slapped it right over to us. Heads up play. Having problems inbounding both clubs, aren't they? Guys aren't moving, creating a lane. Starting lineup on the floor for Syracuse. Rowe and Douglas in the backcourt. Coleman, Owens, and Thompson up front. And Thompson lays it in. The big question for Syracuse, or one of them this year, Billy, was who's going to be the center? Derek Coleman said, oh, I don't want to be the center, but it's tough to tell with this lineup on the floor. They have Owens playing in the middle when they play the 2-3 zone. I think at the end of the year, Manny will be the center. I think he's a terrific prospect. Really works hard at practice. Nice, strong rebound. Now he'll bring it up. A man of many positions. Thompson for three. said was, you know, they didn't recruit me to be a center. Mm -hmm. But if I have to play there a little bit to help us win, that's fine. But I think he wants one of the big kids to come along so he can move out to that power position. That rejected, but he was on Lionel Simmons. We said earlier tonight the L train had to be on track, and they've done a great job of He day. is struggling, but there's so many people playing. Billy Owen. That was after your time at Lasalle, though, right? Oh, way before me. <laughs> First time he's successful in the NBA and with his personal life. Just everybody, when they think of Lasalle, they got the foot in there. I don't think it was to Matty Rowe or Rich Manning. But when you think of LaSalle for himself in the first two seasons, he will become the all-time leading scorer at LaSalle before he's finished. Simmons, yes, got him back. First one was a little hurry by Derek Coleman in the way. But you think of Kenny DeRed, Larry Cannon, Patty Taylor, and maybe some terrific players. Back when I played Frank Corris, who was the number one pick of the Warriors, was an excellent player. Douglas for a two. 12.20 to play in the second half. Nice 
stunning left-handed hook by Conley. He's confident. I mean, he's, he's a, kind of a kid that does a little bit up front for them, handles the pressure as an outlet for them. Bowman in trouble. Runs off to Douglas. <laughs> the rainbow miss. The layup is good. Throw it up and go get it. He is tough when he gets to the middle against the press. He makes it into a fast break situation, Sherman. 21 points for Sherman Douglas. 18 points is the Syracuse lead. Clear out. but a good heads-up play, anticipating the drive on the clear-out. If anything, he maybe should have been over quicker. Here he, he sort of relaxes just a little bit, and of course, he'll learn to stand still. A bad career here. No. He has a way to go, but Sherman Douglas could become the all-time leading scorer in Syracuse history with a good season this year. Dave Bing, of course, is number one. Mm. Not even getting any off at this point. The old patented three-pointer. Do they miss Carr and Legler? And Right away, off the timeout, man-to-man. -man. Speedy just feels he can't let this thing go too far. 11.25 right after them. 16-point Syracuse lead. LaSalle made its living with three-pointers for a large part last year and the play of Lionel Simmons, of course. Over one three-pointer in this ball game. Overton's played well, though. I think he's going to be a nice player for them. And he has just achieved a new career high with that basket. Doug Overton up to 19 points. That eclipses his previous career high of 18, which he did in a ball game last season against Fairfield. Douglas, yes, it looks like he did. See that they will count the basket, and then the charge called against Douglas. He ran into Milko Levers out of the Netherlands. This is the rule. I wish they liked the goal out. Take the goal away. Call the charge. Don't keep both guys happy. I want to see one guy get upset. Animated. Concerned. And Sherman Douglas now has three after the charge, but he's up to 23 points. And the Syracuse lead is back at 16. Simmons. First one where they really didn't get on him. Only had one guy to beat. And L Train is getting on track. He's up to 20 points now. LaSalle showing good spunk, hanging tough, man to man now, trying to take the game to Syracuse. Stevie Thompson. Look at this. Coleman got slapped. Nope. Levers thought he had the ball, but he got the arm of Coleman, according to the official. That showed the height differential, didn't it? Just threw it up. Eric Coleman. 70 to 55. Nearly midway through the second half. 10-20 to play. Jack Hurd. That's five. Herman Reed got him from behind. Syracuse up to the limit now. That's they went up 17 fouls. They went up to Hurd's height. Well, they are very proud of you at LaSalle for your many other accomplishments <laughs> in the game of basketball. Oh, Stevie! Well, they won't get him the hook that time. Look at Jimmy! Mayheim livid really for the first time tonight. He's been upset a couple of other times. He's out of the coaching box at the moment. He's going to have to start wearing sweatsuits on the sideline. I thought he slid after the fact. Good, strong move. Theatrics set that one up. Jimmy. I guess you can say the word Jimmy just said on cable. <laughs> oh, Herman Harid unnecessary there with the grab. <laughs> he grabbed Hurd at the foul line. A couple of quick fouls picked up by Harid. And the crowd of 26,072 here at the Carrier Dome is getting a bit vocal. They haven't had much to get excited about. Syracuse has had a comfortable lead through much of the ball game. And they lead 70 to 56 with 9.54 to play. Sean McDonough, along with Bill Raftery. Great to have you with us tonight on ESPN and SMU in Wyoming. Coming up next, Benny Dees trying to find out if there is life without Fennis Dembo and Eric Lechner. And he'll be going up against John Shoemate and the SMU Mustangs in John Shoemate's debut. There's the shoe out of Jefferson High, now Elizabeth High in New Jersey. And Benny did a great job at New Orleans as well with Dell Eccles, not a bad player. And uh, this particular game, I think Jimmy really got after the official to get the crowd in it. He doesn't like leaving LaSalle hanging around. I don't think he was as upset with the call as the, the lethargic play of his club. 
Syracuse leads by 13. Douglas shoves it up. No good. And Jake Conlon of LaSalle calls for a foul on the rebound. LaSalle is a big problem, I think, right now, Bill. He made it the ball game. I don't think they've got a real good deep shooter like they did last year. I think they will run, take those quick breaks when they can. Now a zone on the inbound. Man to man's been good for them. Might see him switch out of it if Syracuse takes too long with the ball. Oh, and a miss. Nice check out by Conlon. And Thompson tracked it down. Nearly a steal by Lever. Allier blocked. And a breakaway chance for LaSalle. Oderton didn't see Levers. He pulls up for three and it hits. I think he saw him but knew that he might drop kick it. Made sure he didn't give it up or he make, might make the mistake. B.D. Morris wanted a three-pointer. They've ruled that a two-point goal. It looked like three for Overton. And it's an 11-point Syracuse lead. LaSalle staying in the ball game. And Lever has called for a foul underneath. That's the score with 8.52 to play. Matty Rowe back into the ball game for Syracuse. Conlon is going out for LaSalle, and Bob Johnson is back in. Foul on Levers to his first. Just the fourth against the Explorers in the second half. Syracuse already over the limit. 2-3 zone took away the alley-oop, which they like to run for Coleman. They better get some weak side help on Durek, or they're going to be in deep trouble. Here's the front. Yeah, a little late. Levers picks up his second foul in succession. He redshirted last year due to stress fractures in both feet, and Derek Coleman was the victim of the foul, but without the Explorers, well, they're going to give him a shooting foul anyway. Doesn't look like it. He does look like he's filled out a little bit. I think Stark. No, they're not going to give him. Yes, it does look like he's filled out, and no, it is not a shooting foul. There's that high-low they like to run. You saw Billy Owens up high. Syracuse leads by 11. Owens, quick pass to Douglas. Good cut. Great recognition, too, by Douglas. Adding to his all-time career assist mark here at Syracuse. How about the left-handed pass across the lane? Well, you were making the point yesterday. It looked like Billy Owens was practicing left-handed three-point shots, a la Larry Bird. I guess mm -hmm. when you're that good and you get bored, you got to try to work on new things. <laughs> you got to yourself. Bird for three. Milko with another grab. Levers. He went over the back of Coleman. Speedy didn't like the call. Coleman cutting off. And so are we for a timeout. 7.53 to play. Syracuse leads by 13. A while ago, Syracuse has left them around. And all of a sudden, LaSalle creeping back in. And Bayheim has his starting unit on the floor with 7.40 to play. Matt Rowe. Owens had posted up Heard there. Sal back in the man-to-man. -man. And pressuring everywhere. Starr can just do some business down here. Working on Milko Levers. He missed it. And a foul on the rebound. Looks like it's going against Billy Owens. Jim Bayheim doesn't believe it, but that's number four for Billy Owens, who has six points in his Syracuse debut. Jimmy, you're getting old, you gotta be more mature, relax on the sideline. As you see Billy take, or Billy Owens gets the foul, but Durick's strong baseline move, use the right hand, which he does well. Owens to the bench for the four foul. Dave Johnson came into the game for Owens. Sherman Douglas has gone 100 games in his Syracuse career without fouling out, and Billy Owens on the brink of doing it in his first game. Jack Hurd made the first one, and the lead is 12. The floor is creeping back. Hurd averaged 29 points a game in high school last year at Warwick High School in Lidditz, Pennsylvania. You handle all the tough words so well. Dave Johnson nearly lost it. He was a bit shaky in the first half. The freshman from Morgan City, Louisiana. This shot hurt, too. Got to be careful. They're trying to get organized. Get Sherman the ball. 15 on the shot clock. Coleman. Good shot. He ran over Hurd and got the 
the bucket. Turned off for the knob. Good non-call. 14 point Syracuse lead. Just tough inside for them, aren't they? Get the easy basket when they need it. Down to six and a half to play. Weaver thought about three. He wisely passed it up. Stevie Thompson still working hard on Lionel Simmons. Now look at Derrick doubling up down there. Johnson. Now running the time down, 15 seconds on the clock. Simmons got a four foot up and a whistle along the baseline. Stevie Thompson had a clean rejection, but he stepped on the end line. And LaSalle will get the ball back. That great self-control by Lionel Simmons. He knows he's up against it with all the weak side help. The traps are running at him. He's had good composure. We're talking about whether or not to reset the shot clock, which is at 12 right now. Larry Rose, the official. I think they should because he had possession, then stepped on the line. And they have reset the clock. LaSalle wants to score quickly anyway. We're being out-rebounded, out-shot. Nice. Lionel Simmons laid it in. Pretty good extension, huh? And the kiss. 22 for Simmons, one below his average of a year ago. They say he plays his best in the big games as Douglas goes for three and misses. Too many white shirts for them in there. Lionel's not down there, but Conlon being out now. Just don't, not a factor on the glass. Lead back to 14. 35 to play. Scramble for it. Right in your living room. That's no wrong. Weaver is called for the travel. And Speedy wants to talk it over. 76-62. Syracuse with a 14-point lead and the ball with 5.33 to play in the second half. In round one of the Big Apple and IT from the Carrier Dome. We'll be back in just a moment. Rathman and Dan Bonner standing by to call that one for you. Make your move, man. Johnson was rejected, but he was fouled as well by Overton, I believe, or Levers. If it's Le yes, it was Levers, and that is four for Milko, who is from the Netherlands, as we mentioned, and wound up at LaSalle when he came to visit some relatives he has in Washington Crossing, Pennsylvania. Took a look at LaSalle and said, I'd like to come over here and play. And Speedy Morris is glad he did. This is Dave Johnson, the freshman from Morgan City, Louisiana. He went up to the state of Maine, played at Maine Central last year, and led his team to the New England Prep Championship. Pretty good prep school. Hide a few out over there. But interestingly enough, Jimmy's down to like an up and down offense. Some people might call it a stack. They've got a little more motion, and it should free up the post people. You might see Coleman get a few easy ones. Two for Johnson, and Syracuse goes deeper into the bench. Dave Syok, the freshman, seeing his first action. He's out of nearby Vestal, New York, in the suburbs of Binghamton. And Stevie Thompson goes to the bench with 22 points. Great job, too. Defensively, in particular. 16 points, Syracuse lead. Nearing five minutes remaining. 5.05 to be exact. Left to play in the ball game. Overton tried to add to his career high and missed. A breakaway for Douglas. 25 for Sherman Douglas. That's 10 shy of his career high. And Syracuse is back out front by 18. Heard for three. Short. You saw the inexperience, though, by LaSalle. Overton went baseline. Nobody rotated back. Bared the backcourt for an easy goal for Douglas. Donlin got two back for the Explorers. 4.35 to play. Syracuse on the verge of advancing to the second round of the Big Apple NIC. They'll be at home Sunday against an undetermined opponent. The game will start at 2 o'clock here in Syracuse. Well, the worst place for Herman is the foul line. That's where he's going. Bounced himself. This is always a treat. Really pleasant guy to chat with. But he does not enjoy stepping to that line. He'll wait as long as he can to go in there. He won't be in there until the ref is... <laughs> Set the hand and told. Second foul on Steve Reed, and what the coach is referring to is Herman Harid's career free throw percentage, which is 35.4. He shot 26.9% from the line last year on 7 of 26. Yes! Ooh. Almost got the crawler. Shooter's touch. You're all right, coach? <laughs> <laughs> You're cheering for him. You're a big-hearted uh, guy. I know how... 
how he must feel, you know, just dying to get fouled. Look at this. Just grabbed or grazed the tin. Well, his percentage was spared because Syok was called for lane violation, so that one won't count on his record. You know, Herman is more liable to break the glass from the foul line than one of his great thumps. What's amazing is last year, from the floor, he shot 69%. <laughs> He went over the back of Craig Conlon, who's really a nice player for LaSalle. Steady player, nothing spectacular, but grabs a few rebounds and scores some chippy baskets. Hope he's okay. Limpin' twisted his knee. But you notice there, Simmons penetrated. Now he's normally got one guy, maybe another guy that can come over. Here he's got three big people with Syracuse to contend with. Not as easy. Craig Conlon on the line. 4-12 to play, Syracuse lead by 16. A freebie, Coleman in, they get another one. Simmons is laughing, he enticed Coleman into the three-second lane. <laughs> and even Coleman looked like he was trying to suppress a smile. A little giggle. He knew he had been had. Conlon makes that one. One shot! He's a career 79% free throw shooter, and his supply average just about 10 points per game last year. 14, you know, Jimmy can't sit back and relax. The sound just keeps hanging in there. And as a result, he's had to go, for the most part, with the starters throughout the second half. He's got everybody in, but not in numbers. One guy come in. Nice pitch. Douglas hands it, 27 for Sherman. Back to the 2-3 now. Make LaSalle use the clock a little bit. That clock is down to 340. Heard was short from three-point range, and he got it back. And he was fouled. Double team by Johnson and Sion. And let's see who they call the foul on. Looks like Johnson. First sort of threw that one, didn't shoot it, and ran it down. Big, strong kid, huh? Syracuse and West Virginia. Billy Owen's brother Michael in action for Dick McPherson, Syracuse Orangemen against undefeated West Virginia and Major Harris. That's for Eastern Supremacy at 6 and then at 9 Eastern time. The University of Miami Hurricanes ranked third in the nation against number 12, LSU. A long day for Jimmy B tomorrow. All of these Syracusans will be glued to the set tomorrow to watch the football orange. And Anthony Scott is in for the first time. He's a freshman out of Rochester, New York. Herman Harid back on the bench. I didn't get a chance to chat with Jay, Jay Krauthammel before the game, but he's done a marvelous job here with their older programs. As a matter of fact, lacrosse, one of the premier clubs in the country. LaSalle now hustling. I mean, they are scrappy, a tribute to that guy. Speedy gets a lot out of his team, doesn't he? And Syracuse calls for a timeout. 3.31 to play. It's Syracuse 82 and LaSalle 68. Step behind, let Simmons slide through there. But Jimmy Beheim used the Sabona game, that loss, to his advantage with his team. The idea being they thought they were good, they're reading the papers. Tonight, I think, as a coach, he can look at this tape and see some good things, but not for long periods of time. He has a little more upfront strength than a lot of people give him credit for. And I just think Manning and Syok down the road are going to be the inside people that he needs at the five spot. Simmons trying to make a pair from the free throw line. Lionel's had a little trouble from the strike tonight. And Syracuse will get the ball out of bounds. 13 point orange lead, 327 to play. I made a point a moment ago about Syracuse starters having to see a lot of action, particularly here in the second half. Because LaSalle has stayed in it. Sherman Douglas for 29 points has it. And I bring that up really because if they win, and it looks like they will, they'll have to play here Sunday afternoon, just one day in between. It's early in the season. You know they're not fully conditioned as far as insurance is concerned, and that might be important if they play an opponent on Sunday who had a cupcake win in the first game. Oh, an alley-oop to row. I got to check with Sherman. That's the wrong guy to run it to. I, I just think it's the first game that the idea of 
the anxiety, the nerves. I think some of that has to do with the tiredness, but he'll play them a lot. I'm sure Sunday he'll be ready for it. It's been the Sherman Douglas Show. We're back after this. Dome. Jack Hurd for three, and he has it. And LaSalle is back within 14. 86-72, but time running out on the Explorers. We're down to 240 to play. And Jack Hurd's going to be okay. I think he's rattled early, trying to impress, force a little bit. Looks like he's got good range, pretty good with the dribble. Almost all the freshmen in this game look nervous. Yeah, it's, it's to be expected. Good trap. And the steal for LaSalle. 2.20 to play. They can cut it to 12 or even 11 with a three-pointer. Overton didn't get it. Shot the rebound. Well earned. And it's tough. Again, LaSalle didn't have anybody back. Sherman Douglas sneaky down the floor. Wasn't spotted. The storyline, LaSalle devastated on the boards by Syracuse. Four Syracuse performers in double figures. And you can see they've got a lot of follow-up shots. 29 for the general. Derek will view that piece of dribbling again in front of the coaches. That's a little hot. Well, too anxious to get to the station. I'm just one game with you, and I'm <laughs> just seeing those keys to victory rhythmic, beginning huh? in rhyme. Yeah. A Coach Raftery trademark. <laughs> the viewers around the country, myself included, have become accustomed to. Little spread now. They make the defense work a little bit harder. Heard with the giveaway. 143 to play. Heard on the verge of advancing through the second round of the Big Apple NIT. And Bayheim goes back to the bench again for Eric Rogers, the junior from Temple City, California. Hasn't played much the past couple of years. He got in 13 games last year and nine as a freshman. Matt Rowe has gone to the bench. Put a few pounds on. I, he said he's ready to fight now. Of course, all the kids nowadays are into the weight program, the Nautilus, mm -hmm. just to tone up a little bit. 30 points for Douglas, and he's bidding for 31. He didn't get it. He's five short of his career high of 35. Bird has blocked by Anthony Scott. Yeah, he anticipated the back door. It was, it was deflected. Good call. Good help with the official here. Jack Hurd tried to entice Bobby Johnson into the back cut. He didn't go for it, but it was deflected by a Syracuse player. Overton had it slapped away. Rogers couldn't outlet it. All kinds of explorers underneath, but Johnson says, game's <laughs> over. <laughs> and the set. This is my time. He had about three options underneath, but he decided he was the best option. 115 to go. Syracuse with a 13-point lead. No player. Yeah. No extra. Scott. Didn't get it. Thompson couldn't give it in. One minute remaining. Simmons, air ball, third, blocked by Coleman, and he came down with it. All alone underneath is Douglas, but Thompson says, this is my turn. We're going to get to intentional. The basket went in, you say before. Right here, Stevie wants to jam, and just a giveaway. Intentional foul. Yeah, two and two. Too many wins. <laughs> Is that man happy? He must have been happy when he won the basketball coach's golf tournament. He's the best golfer among the NCAA basketball coach. You ever played with him? Yes, I have. He'll hit it 20 feet away from the pin and say, what a bad shot. <laughs> so he's not much different <laughs> on the course. No, he, he, you know, it's amazing as people get to know him. Uh, there's a lot to him. He's got great compassion for other coaches and other programs. A likable guy. Yeah. So I think if you just see his sideline demeanor and the winces, you mm -hmm. might say he's a bit of a sourpuss. But you're right. People who know him know Jim mm -hmm. Beheim is a good guy. Gets along well with his peers. Elliot! Anthony Scott took the feed from Douglas. What a night the general is having. And Scott 
was the beneficiary that time. Well, he's watched that from each direction. It's just gotten to flow quickly, didn't he? The orange was run over. He took the charge. Everybody <laughs> in orange getting Joe, involved in the egg. Joe Piscopo in there. <laughs> You wouldn't want Conlon running into you, though, would you? No. 16-point mm. Syracuse lead. Forget it. Oh, it's from Sherman Douglas. A little icing on the cake for the Orangemen. Got it on the way down. Johnson missed. Sherman was three-quarters of the way down the court looking for the outlet, but there was a foul on the rebound activity. I believe they'll give that one to Hurd. points and 11 assists unofficially for Sherman Douglas the last two with some style points attached and he is proving a lot of the so-called experts right first team preseason All-American according to Associated Press Reed and Smith Playboy Sport Magazine the U.S. Basketball Writers Association Sporting News ranked Sherman Douglas the best point guard in the nation Nick Vital only has a number two though behind B.J. Armstrong well, Dick's an individual, has his own drummer. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody would argue with that. He does? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just admire Sherman Douglas. I mean, he came in here, took a back seat to the Pearl, just hung tough, and just developed his own feel for this game that uh, transcends, I think, the X's and O's. Oh. Conlon, Rodrigo. They will score it as Rogers goaltended. Jim Beheim, career victory number 288. He has now won 12 of his 13 season openers, and the Orangemen will advance to the second round of the Big Apple and IC. They will be at home on Sunday against an opponent yet to be determined. Coach, it's been fun. I enjoyed it a lot. The final 92 to 76 return.